All right. Hello, everyone. I am so glad that you are joining me today. For those of you that don't know me, I am Serenity. I am a doula and a lactation counselor, and I have a passion for all things pregnancy, birth, postpartum, breastfeeding, the whole nine yards. So I wanted to do this class because uh, a lot of misinformation is spread about breastfeeding and like just the basics of it. And um, even in the hospitals, nurses that aren't uh, certified lactation counselors on the mother baby floor and everything aren't, some of them aren't trained on proper uh, lactation counseling and all that sort of stuff. And so they can say that a latch is good, but it's not good and everything like that. So I wanted to do a basics of breastfeeding um, and kind of just give you an overview of the basics so that you feel confident and prepared going into your breastfeeding journey. Um, so as we go, feel free to ask questions along the way. Um, if you want to put them in the comment thing, then I can read them after like I'm done like saying one slide and um, that sort of thing, or you can save them to the end, whatever works for you. Um, and so without further ado, let me get to my presentation screen here about what we're going to be talking about. So basically, I'm just going to go over the basics of the benefit from the benefits of breastfeeding to colostrum and what it is, how to collect it, all that good stuff, proper latch, uh, the golden hour and breast crawl, milk coming in, common problems and troubleshooting those problems, and then recommended products that I have tried and personally love and use and recommend to everyone that is planning on breastfeeding. So Let's jump into the benefits of breastfeeding. So, in my opinion, one of the biggest benefits of breastfeeding is the immunity, or that our bodies make milk specifically for our baby. So, uh, this is called passive immunity. And so, basically, when our baby is latched onto the breast, there's kind of like a backwash going on. As gross as that sounds, it is amazing because our body then picks up and reads what our baby needs. So if they've been exposed to um, some sort of virus or sickness or whatever, our body is like, oh, alert, alert, alert. We need to start creating antibodies to tr to help the baby fight off this. Or if you yourself are have um, a cold or something, then you don't have to worry about not being like, with your baby because your body is actually making antibodies to protect the baby from whatever you have. Um, and so, that is, I think, in my opinion, the most like amazing benefit of breastfeeding because you don't get that with anything else. Our bodies literally specifically create milk just for our babies. Um, so uh, some other benefits we'll talk about is it lowers the risks of asthma, diabetes 1, obesity, SIDS, ear infections, uh, gastrointestinal infections, respiratory diseases, so therefore there's less time spent sick and also because of the passive immunity as well. Um, and then for moms, it lowers the risk of serious health problems uh, such as breast and ovarian cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, endometriosis, cardiovascular disease, literally so many things. Um, and it also supports healthy postpartum emotions and um, helps with weight loss as it burns about 500 to 700 calories a day. And so there is that. For both baby and mama, it enhances bonding. Breast milk is easy to digest, so there's no going through several brands of formula to find what works for the baby. Um, sometimes babies do have a like intolerance if mom is eating dairy or gluten. Some babies uh, do have like a reaction to that, so that could be something that comes up. Just keep an eye on that. And then um, there's no time to make or Walmart bottles needed. I have, there's been countless times where I have uh, been so thankful that I did not have to prepare a bottle or anything when my baby got fussy because she was hungry. So there is that. And then next we'll talk about colostrum, which is super cool. So for this to show up. Okay, so colostrum is liquid gold. It's known as liquid gold. It is a breast milk that is produced throughout pregnancy and throughout the first week or so after the baby is born. It gets its name from the gold color. So as you can see here, 
um, it is super yellow and like golden. And then as the days go on, it kind of gets to be the white color that's like typical breast milk or mature milk. And so it is a super food that is full of antibodies to boost your baby's immune system, which is super important, especially if you're giving birth at a hospital where there's just tons of germs and everything everywhere. Um, and it also coats the gut and helps create a healthy microbiome. Um, they even did studies to show babies that were just given colostrum for the first like couple of days and then not ever breastfed after that uh, versus a baby who had never had colostrum or breast milk. And just from a couple of colostrum feedings, their gut microbiome was like way more, like way better. I don't even know what words I'm looking for. It's like it was better formed than a baby that had never had a colostrum. And it's also a laxative, so it helps get sticky meconium out. Um, and then um, something that you can do, which I did, was you can collect your colostrum prior to giving birth. So collecting colostrum is beneficial because if you had um, – if you end up having an emergency or something where you cannot feed your baby colostrum um, or there's a delay in it, um, rather than your baby getting formula or something, then you have your own colostrum ready to give them. So I think it's super beneficial. And another benefit, if you don't end up needing it, hopefully for an emergency, um, you can actually save it for when your baby is sick and like the first year or so of life because it is jam packed with all the good stuff. Um, so, um, pictured here is, uh, my colostrum that I ended up saving. Um, and a good rule of thumb is to start collecting it about at like 37 weeks or so of pregnancy because, um, nipples, I mean, you can talk to your care provider. You might be able to do it prior to just see what your body is telling you because, um, nipple stimulation can actually create oxytocin, which then can um, give you some cramping, contractions, that sort of thing. So kind of just keep in mind what your body is feeling like um, to see if your body is cramping or not. And um, if not, then you can collect it earlier. Um, but if you are having some cramping, it's best to wait until it's like a safe point for you to go into labor. Um, so there's that and then how to collect colostrum so you can collect it by hand expressing um which is super simple you can just look up um like a video on that um to see how to hand express which is a super i believe a super important um thing to learn just in case you ever need to hand express um whether you are out away from your baby and you just need to express your milk so that you don't get um, like clogged ducts or mass that would lead to mastitis uh, or just for comfort. Um, or if you need to get some milk out um, so that you have like a letdown before feeding your baby because sometimes your letdown can be a lot, especially for newborns. Um, and so like kind of getting some of like the harsh flow out can be helpful with uh, attaching. So, um, yes, look up a video on how to hand express. Um, and then for me, hand expressing into um, a container, learning how to do it and managing both things at once was very difficult. So I decided to try the haka that I got or the hakas that I got, um, which are spelled incorrectly on the PowerPoint, actually. It's spelled H-A-A-K-K-A-A-S. I think that Grammarly uh, <laughs> um, did the spelling of Exetica. Haka is something else, too, um, spelled that way. So, anyways, uh, what I did was I got the Hakas. I had two of them. Uh, they look like this. Um, there's a, it's like a manual pump, basically, kind of. And so what you do is you hold back this part. Put it, squeeze it, put it over your nipple and pop it like that. And then this kind of stays like this. And um, you can massage your breast well to get like milk flowing. Um, and you can also kind of squeeze it a little bit. Um, 
And then you should have like a little bit of a letdown of colostrum whenever you're harvesting your colostrum. Um, and the reason you want to either hand express or use like a haka is because there's no little parts to get uh, colostrum stuck in because most women will only be able to collect about one milliliter at a time of colostrum. So it's not gonna be much at all. It'll like literally maybe just um, fill the bottom, maybe not even. And then I totally forgot to grab some of the syringes, but you can see in the picture, um, those are the syringes that I collected it in. So after I um, was done collecting the colostrum, I just sucked it up with the syringe and then date it and then um, put it in a plastic bag in the freezer. So there's that. Um, and then again, do not expect there to be a lot. I was kind of like surprised that it wasn't more and I was like a little bit worried. Um, so, I, but it is completely normal to only be able to collect about one milliliter at a time. Six milliliters is typically the maximum. Whenever I was in labor, actually, you can take advantage of when you're in labor because your body knows what's happening. Um, it produces more colostrum. So while you're in labor, um, pumping can actually release oxytocin, which is, if you are familiar with Pitocin in the hospital, it's a synthetic form of oxytocin to speed up labor and everything. So pumping is a great way to kind of get labor going, progressing, keep it going, um, that sort of thing, because nipple stimulation releases oxytocin. Um, and so you can take advantage and pump during labor. I actually got 40 milliliters in one like pumping session while I was in labor. Um, and I was able to save it and donate it to a uh, local mom who had had breast cancer and like all sorts of stuff going on. So she wasn't sure that she'd be able to um, breastfeed. And so she was able to give that to her baby and everything, which was amazing. I was so thankful that I was able to do that. And it was just the coolest thing ever. Um, so there it is about collecting colostrum. All right, let's see here. Then to the next slide. So the golden hour is the first hour after your baby is born. Um, and it is super important and beneficial to have uninterrupted skin on skin time during this hour for many reasons. And most hospitals are now baby friendly. And so they do everything that they can on with the baby on mom, unless there is an emergency um, where the baby doesn't get taken away or if it was a C-section, um, that sort of thing. So skin on skin in the first hour helps um, babies regulate their breathing and their body temperature. Um, and let's see here. I had some other things I wanted to say. I just wanted to, it also helps uh, reduce the risk of hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar, which um, if you have gestational diabetes throughout your pregnancy, your baby is more likely to have hypoglycemia. So that's something to take note of. Um, they do take your baby's blood in that first hour. They'll just put their um, foot to test for it. And uh, depending on the care providers, they might try to push formula to get their blood sugar up or like a sugar water or something like that. Um, you have the right to, if you would like to, um, and feel that it's in your best, your baby's best interest, you can ask to have more time with um, skin on skin and get a first feeding in before uh, they give formula or the sugar water. Um, because again, the skin on skin helps regulate the blood sugar. And then also the colostrum will help get their blood sugar regulated um, as well. So there's that. Skin on skin also helps with bonding and also the third stage of labor as well. Um, and the third stage of labor is the placenta being delivered. And so it also helps with um, preventing the risk of hemorrhaging. So that is super cool because skin on skin helps slow the rush of adrenaline um, and it releases oxytocin. And then that's how it helps expel the placenta because again, it helps um, your uterus contract. And then um, that helps reduce the risk of hemorrhaging. Um, and then the last, um, one of the last, I mean, like there's many benefits of the golden hour and skin on skin. 
But um, the last point I have to make is baby-led initiation of breastfeeding. So you are actually made with, um, in pregnancy, your areolas tend to get darker. And um, you're, they also secrete a smell of amniotic fluid. So your baby naturally gravitates towards them. And if they're on your chest, near your breast, they are very likely to um, initiate breastfeeding all on their own. They have a rooting reflex. They can kind of crawl and move and find their way. It is the coolest thing to watch. If you have time, look up um, a video, an actual post one in the um, Facebook event too. Um, look up breast the breast crawl. It is super cool to see baby just resting on mom's chest and then all of a sudden being able to find and latch on. And usually they have a um, good latch if you if they initiate it themselves, because a lot of times we try to get in the way, whether it's our fingers or trying to um, like kind of shove their head into our breast, whatever, we get in the way a lot. And so if they are able to self watch themselves, it helps with um, kind of ensuring that they have a good latch. Uh, you will wanna check it and everything obviously, but it is usually a good latch whenever they latch themselves. So now getting a proper latch. I have a video on this, which is a really good resource. Um, so I will show you guys that and then I'll kind of go over like the little uh, tips and things. So let me figure out how to get to the other screen. Um, it is so whenever you are latching you want to bring baby's nose to the nipple and wait for them to open up their mouth nice and wide and then um you want basically their bottom lip to attach first and then their top lip so they're kind of like eating a sandwich um and there's no need to like pinch some um people will say that you need to like pinch your uh, breast into like a C to make a sandwich but there's really no need to do that and that can interfere with the latch as well so just bring the nose to the nipple wait for them to open up and then um, kind of anchor their mouth um, and then they'll close and latch and hopefully it'll be a good latch um, if not if it's painful in like a pinching type of way you can try to relatch which in the video she said to stick it in the corner of their mouth I find it's easy to stick it in the corner of the mouth, but also pressing against the breast. Um, so kind of I press it like against um, the breast in the corner of the mouth and then kind of press in and that kind of helps um, better than just like sticking it in their mouth, in my opinion. Um, and so like in the video, your baby should be latched onto most of the areola as well, not just the nipple. That is what will make it painful if they just are on the nipple. Um, so there's that. Um, and then when you unlatch again, like the video showed, your nipple should look like chapstick, not lipstick. Okay. Um, lipstick is going to be very, going to be very, very painful. Um, and in the first few weeks, it is normal for your nipples to be sore or like tender, that sort of thing, but it should not like hurt, um, like be pinchy or uncomfortable the entire uh, duration of feeding. So there is that. Okay, so some important things to remember, um, especially as like if you're a first time mom, a first time breastfeeding mom, then these things feel like it is normal. So it is normal to feel like newborns nurse 24 7 because they're learning how to nurse they're searching for comfort because they've been inside you feeling all the warmth and comfort and hearing your heartbeat and that was their normal environment and now they're in a completely new environment and it's cold and so they're going to be wanting to be on you for lots of lots of comfort and it's also helping your milk come in it's telling your body hey baby is here we need to make more milk and um everything too so there's that it's normal for their feeding to last very long time. I promise it does get shorter. Uh, when my daughter was born, I think that literally she would be on the breast feeding for like an hour and they would have an hour in between. And like, it was very, it was a lot of work at, uh, um, in the beginning, but after a few weeks, um, 
feedings got way shorter and now it's like maybe 10 minutes at a time and then we can go for a couple hours so i promise it is worth it and in the daunting like first few weeks i just want to encourage you to stick it out stick it out to at least eight weeks because that's whenever like you kind of have, are in the swing of things your baby has a good latch um all that sort of stuff and it gets easier if it's not getting easier make sure that you contact a lactation counselor to work with you so you guys can figure out um what the problem is i'm available as well um but if you're not local and you want someone local then um you can find someone um so there's that um if your baby is having enough wet and dirty diapers in the first week or so they're getting enough milk because whenever they're nursing forever it may feel like they're not getting enough milk and you're wondering what's going on um but their tummies are super tiny they're mixed reviews on the starting out size but it's between the size of a cherry and a walnut so if you can imagine that it's very small they do not need a lot in the first couple of days um and it is normal for a baby to lose weight their birth weight in the first couple of days as well pediatricians just like to see that their birth they're back at their birth weight by two weeks um so if you're concerned about making sure your baby is getting enough you can do weighted feeds and so this means this is or you do it and you change your baby's diaper um you can put clothes on them or not um and then you weigh them um make sure you weigh them the same that you're going to be like if um you put clothes on them make sure you keep the same clothes on and everything so just change your diaper weigh them take note of that so you don't forget and then feed them and then weigh them again with the same diaper same clothes on if they were enclosed and then you can um subtract the difference to make sure that they're getting um the good amount which varies on their age um so if you um need that specific information it is readily available um usually just by I don't want to say a Google search, but usually you can find some good information. If not, you can contact me and I can look at my um, reference book for you if that is a concern. Okay, so hunger cues, how often, switching sides, all these good things. So babies have several hunger cues that you'll learn and pick up on. Every baby is different, but most babies will root, which is like turning their head from side to side with their mouth open. They'll stick their hands in their mouth. They'll yawn, open and close their mouth um all that sort of stuff and then crying and being upset is a late hunger cue that we want to avoid especially in the beginning when you're working on um getting a good latch because you don't want them to be upset while you're trying to get them latched on if they are super upset you can calm them down first in the reset position before attempting to latch them so the reset position is simply holding them like upright kind of like um in a little froggy position um so their head is upright here on your chest and then you're kind of just going to calm them down like that so they can smell your milk and just your smell um and that usually does a very good job at calming them down and kind of resetting them and then you can try to latch um next is how often so in the hospitals and everything they'll say feed every two hours and while this is true you do not want to go more than two to three hours between feedings until the baby is back up at their birth weight and everything this does not mean that you have to wait two hours to feed the baby if they're showing hunger cues. The best um, advice is to just feed on demand uh, because this is gonna help your milk supply. It's going to ensure that they're not gonna be upset when you're trying to latch them, which can make it just stressful and difficult and overwhelming and everything for both you and the baby. Um, and um, there was different studies actually done. And so, Babies that were fed like every two hours on the dot, um, like with like hunger cues, or not hunger cues, but just basically fed every two hours on the dot. Um, and babies that were like were being born in, um, it was a third world country, but the moms basically just like pick up and go right after they give birth and they just wear their baby and they just nurse them on demand. Um, these babies often fed like for like a minute or two at a time but they would nurse more frequently. And so those babies actually got the same amount of milk in the time frame, and also nursed the same amount of time as babies that were fed every two hours. So just 
learn your baby's needs and feed on demand is the best advice because it's going to help in more ways than one. Um, so switching sides. So everyone is different. So switching sides every feed. Um, so you might want to switch sides every other feed or you might switch sides um, every single feed. So a good rule of thumb is to switch sides every 20 minutes or so. Um, if the baby seems satisfied or they fall asleep or whatever, after 20 minutes on one side, then there's no need to switch sides for that feed. Just start on the next side for the next feed. Um, so there is that. Uh, another note, too, is some women um, are not able to have a letdown if they start on one side. So this is rare, So, um, but it's just something to know just in case it happens to you. Um, but if you're not able to, like, for example, if you need to start on your right side in order to get a, let, a letdown on your left side, just basically to get the everything flowing, um, that's something to note as well. Um, okay. Now we will go on to milk coming in. So your milk comes in, mature milk will typically come in on day two two to five after giving birth. Um, and you'll notice that your breasts will be engorged and rock hard um, as your body learns the needs of your baby. Uh, so basically it's gonna give you a whole bunch of supply and then as your baby feeds and everything, it learns and it's like, okay, we can we can chill out a little bit. So en engorged breasts can be difficult to latch onto. So you can either hand express or use um, hakas to uh, express and gain some relief and soften them a little bit. You do not want to pump or express them until they're empty because then this will tell your body to make more milk if you're feeding your baby afterwards. Um, and then at the same time, you do not want to leave your breast full as it can lead to mastitis. So it's a, a balancing act a little bit until your milk regulates, but it is totally doable. And this is actually a great time where you can actually store some milk with um, the hoppers. So whenever my milk first came in, it was extremely uncomfortable in the morning. Um, whenever she would like go longer stretches um, between feedings, and so and also you you produce a lot of milk in the nighttime. So in the morning I'd wake up and it would just be like super uncomfortable. So before I would feed her, I would get the the two hawkas that I had and I'd stick them on and massage and then um get some milk out. I usually get a good ounce or two just from like one letdown. And then um and then I would feed her on one side. And then if you want to build a supply, um if you're going back to work or whatnot, um, and you want to start building a supply, one thing you can do, but I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you're prepared to kind of have a little bit of an oversupply, is whatever you feed, you can put a haka on the opposite side that you're feeding on. And this will collect the milk from your letdown instead of like soaking your nursing bra or whatever. Um, and you can collect that milk. But since it does have a little bit of suction, it is telling your body to that we need this milk. So that's just something to note. But it is super helpful if you're wanting to build a supply without the extra um, time and energy needed for pumping and that sort of thing. Another note I want to talk just like talk on a little bit that I didn't have in my notes was if you plan on pumping just be prepared that a pump is not as efficient as a baby so you might only be able to pump two ounces at a time or something like that whereas your body is actually producing more your pump is just not going to be as efficient as your baby with getting milk out and for some reason like for me um I'm not able to get any like a whole lot of relief on my left breast from pumping, but I am on my right breast and I've tried like everything, super weird. So just kind of take note of your body and like know that the outcome or like the output in the pump is not the same as the output that your, your body is actually making with your baby. So there is that. Okay, so now we'll move on to common uh, problems and troubleshooting with breastfeeding. So first, nursing all the time. As I said before, newborns nurse a lot. They're getting the hang of things. They want your comfort. So just make sure that they're having enough wet and dirty diapers in the first few days. Um, 
and know that you're making enough milk for them if they are having enough wet and dirty diapers in the first few days. And then if you are really concerned, do the weighted feeds like I talked about. Another thing is you hear women say that they feel like a, just an enormous amount of bonding when they're breastfeeding. And it's completely normal to not feel this enormous amount of bond with your newborn when they're breastfeeding. Um, in fact, there is even something called dysphoric milk ejection, which is the opposite feeling of being bonded and happy. And it's just um, with the way the hormones are and just like the drop in hormones and everything. So some women may feel whenever they have their letdown, they feel like sudden anxiety, sad, angry, all those sort of things. And while we're talking about letdowns, <laughs> I went another thing I wasn't in my notes, but letdowns can feel different for everyone. So for me personally, it kind of feels like, not like pins and needles in like a super bad way, but it kind of feels, that's like the best description I can say. Other women don't feel their letdown at all. Um, so just some things to note, just uh, letdown feels kind of different for everyone, but I think that most people it kind of feels a little bit like pins and needles, but not like pins and needles. That's just the best way I can explain the feeling. Um, so, there is that and just something to be prepared for. <laughs> okay, so bleeding and cracked nipples are another concern. So sore nipples that are like sore and tender are completely normal for the first few weeks as your breasts are getting used to just like being sucked on all the time, basically. Um, but bleeding and cracked nipples are not normal and they need to be taken care of right away. So this is usually caused by a bad latch. So you can apply clean breast milk to them, keep them clean, and change the nursing pads frequently as you don't want them to be like to remain like in a moist environment. You want to make sure that you're keeping them dry and clean and everything. So you can choose to apply a linoleum uh, ointment. Or another thing that I highly recommend are these silverette um, nipple shields, which I use these as kind of a preventative method. So these things, I think they're around $60. I'll link them in the um, Facebook event. But what you do is you just place them over your nipples, and they actually collect a little bit of breast milk. And the breast milk helps uh, basically prevent any sorts of cracks and bleeding and, like, all this sort of stuff. All it basically helps um, against all the wear and tear on your nipples. And also, another great benefit is it... Um, protects against any rubbing, which is like super uncomfortable um, whenever your nipples are sore and just like raw. So these things are very protective. So what I did was I actually would put these on and keep them on during the day and then um, just sleep shirtless at nighttime so that they could be dry and have like airing out time. And I seriously did notice a difference. Luckily, I never had any bleeding or cracking or um anything like that, but I did have a friend who her, okay, I don't want to scare you guys, but her um, nipple actually started, um, it was like very cracked. Um, and these actually helped save her nipples. And so in a matter of days, so these are good for preventative and they're also good for healing in general. So using these are amazing. And you want to make sure that they're actually the silver rep because there are a bunch of knockoff brands that have like they're not really silver they say that they're silver and then they chip and everything and they're not good these things i'll be able to use for all my babies because they're actually real um so make sure that you get them from silverettes um so there's that and i don't need them anymore but i'm keeping them like i don't currently need them i use them for probably a good two or three months um until I felt like I had everything down and it wasn't sore or anything. And um, I'll probably use them again whenever she's like really teething or she bites or whatever. They're perfect for that. And I'll be able to use them for my next baby. So they're worth the investment. <laughs> okay, so the next thing is tongue and lip tie. So if you think that your baby has a deep latch or like a good latch rather, um, but still feel pinching or pain, you can check for a, a tongue and or lip tie. So this is when the frenulum on the upper lip or the bottom of the tongue, the frenulum is like this uh, little guy here. You have that on the bottom of your tongue too. But if that is too long or thick, it makes it hard for the baby to actually fully extend their 
lip or use their tongue. And so there's different degrees of it. Some of it is very minor. Other ones are very major and very obvious. Um, but this leads to painful latches um, because they're not able to latch good. Uh, slow weight gain and the baby may seem fussy at the breast due to irritation of not being able to like fully extend in the way that they're supposed to extend. Um, and then there are, again, different degrees of it. And then it can be diagnosed by your baby's pediatrician. And they might be able to... Um, do like the surgery or clip it there. There's if it, you can either get it clipped or um, what's the word? Basically like burnt, basically, um, like burnt off. There's different ways you can do it. So talk to your baby's pediatrician, they might be able to do it in the office or they might make a referral. Um, so there's that. Next we have clogged ducts and mastitis. So clogged ducts, is just what it sounds like. It is uh, basically presents as a lump in your breast and it is caused by poor drainage, um, which can happen if you're wearing a super tight bra or if you haven't emptied your breast in a while, if you have a poor latch, if a feeding is skipped, that sort of thing. Um, and then it can even be related to stress. So if you do nothing, it can lead to mastitis. So you wanna make sure to take care of it as soon as possible. So using a hot compress and massage to break it up and move it on out is the best way to do it. Um, and then feed and pump on that side to get it out as soon as possible. You can also express in the shower as well if you want that constant hot water and kind of relief from the clogged duct um, as well. So mastitis is the inflammation of the breast tissue that can also include an infection. So most women describe it as feeling like they have the flu with pain in their breasts. Um, usually it only happens in one breast, um, but it is typically caused from prolonged engorgement or a clogged duct. So if you get mastitis, it's important to continue breastfeeding on both sides if you want to continue breastfeeding. Um, it might require antibiotics. Just depends. Um, and it usually is like a good week or so um, of feeling this way, but it does pass and it will get better. Just make sure that you try to prevent it as much as possible because no one wants to feel like that, especially when they're taking care of a newborn and everything. So there's that. So recommended products. I already touched on some of these, but there are the Silverettes, uh, Nipple Shields, the Haka. Getting two of these, I highly recommend. Um, I'll link the ones. I don't actually have the Haka brand. I have a different brand, but I love them. And it comes with like a little plug and then also a cap. Um, another cool thing is if you, for storing milk, I didn't touch on that, but I'll post um, like a little guide on it because it's just easier to have a, a picture. You can take a screenshot or whatnot. Um, but you can actually store milk in the fridge for, um, like you can collect the same milk for 20, with, within 24 hours. So if you want to, um, use this with every feeding to make to build a supply then you can actually just uh, use it and then you can either store it in here or you can put it in a, a bag or a mason jar or whatnot and then you can just stick this in the fridge instead of washing it and everything right away you can stick it in the fridge for 24 hours before it needs to be cleaned because the refrigeration helps keep the milk um from or not like the milk but it helps from bacteria growing and everything like that so that's a little fun fact, a little tip. Um, next, I got these um, nursing pads, and these are the ones that I have found work great, like the best. I love them. It comes with like a little wet bag, uh, so if you're out and about and you are leak a lot, then you can have some replacements with you and a bag to put them in. And then um, Bobby Pillow is great. I love our boppy pillow. I got a boppy pillow and my breast friend. I prefer the boppy pillow, but to each their own. Um, the my breast friend might be your favorite, but I personally like the boppy just it's a little bit more flexible. Um, and then next is most pediatricians will recommend that your baby has vitamin D supplement if that you're breastfeeding because breast milk does not have vitamin D. And in today's world, we are usually very vitamin D deficient. So unless you have very high levels of vitamin D, there's not gonna be a whole lot in your breast milk to give your baby, or if you're not outside a lot, 
all those sorts of things. So I searched for a very long time for the vitamin D that I felt comfortable giving um, my daughter because there's a lot of it that has a whole bunch of added ingredients. And then some people were saying that their baby just refused to eat after because you do put it on your nipple. Um, and it changed the flavor and everything. And so I definitely wanted something that was organic and didn't have added stuff to it. And so I found these uh, small folk um, vitamin D drops. And they are plant-based. And it just has... Um, it is just the organic MCT coconut oil, olive oil, and then um, vitamin D. And it is a whole year supply because you just need one drop a day. You place right on your nipple. And um, yeah, and it's super easy. You just do a little dropper full and everything. So these are the ones that I have found. And uh, Ellie hasn't had any problems taking it and doesn't even notice that it's on there. So there is that. If you guys have any questions or anything, please feel free to um, send, message me, comment, all the things. Um, I hope that this was super helpful and informational um, to you and helping you feel confident in your breastfeeding journey. Um, if you need any lactation support, I'm here as well. Whether you are local or you need to do like a FaceTime or text message even, um, all that good stuff, I'm here for you. So um, thank you so much for watching. And